So I competed in this event, and this was by far the most difficult event in this series, the Ultimate Self-Defense Championship, and two, the most difficult knife defense I've ever done in my whole life. Also, this one's gonna have a little bit of a surprise guest, and we're gonna go over all that right now. They just stabbed me a bunch. After it, I was pretty upset with myself. Uh, they got exponentially harder. Ooh, I can't wait to talk about that. Hmm, who was that? Was that Matt? Mr. Clinton always comes out with the best yeah, stuff. Including a set of self-defense scenarios. The situational stuff, so you may have noticed that I skipped that episode. Mostly because you kind of see everything that there is. Like, there wasn't really a lot of like behind the scenes stuff. Only an hour break before they were set to compete in the next challenge. And while they were able to keep up good spirits. When I win, can you ship the belt? I don't want to put it in my suitcase. When I win this shit, I'm gonna wear that on the bottom. Plain. No, no, no. I want it to be in pristine condition. It's not the ultimate boy championship. We were all so beaded up at this point. That was all of the energy that I had to muster. Was just let me let me just riff. Let me just banter a little bit. But that was like I I wasn't gonna be getting up to make a witty joke. I was gonna stay right where I was. I almost got like bullet holes and shit to start with. In fact, when I win it, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna shoot it full of bullets. Each participant will enter a padded room where they that is correct. By a single attacker carrying a marker representing a knife. We also did that. Then have to defend against the knife attacker for. 20 seconds which is much longer than you think so we had to go against a bunch of guys for 20 seconds it's very hard to keep somebody from stabbing you in that little room for 20 seconds the contenders will receive points after each attempt and if at the end of 20 seconds they will remain unscathed they will receive three points each time if there will be wounds that are not fatal two points will be received if the wounds will be deadly zero points will be given and every time a contender will get wounded a wound mark will appear on the screen rokas knows i have a bit of an issue with his marker doing with his, his little marking marks. You'll see, marking marks in the funky bunch. Round one. I go in there feeling like, screw this, I don't even care. I don't train for a knife and they're gonna go all Jordan Chow sewing machine style. I'm gonna get lit up here and it's gonna suck. I don't remember exactly what happens, but the sewing machine, that, that does happen, 100%. Okay, we got, oh, he goes for a jumping kick, gets stabbed a couple times. Gets hands on that hand. If you ignore that hand, I mean, you just get eaten up. You have to have hands on that hand, which is something we figured out afterwards. Well, we're kind of during. Yeah, that's tough. There's a lot of marks. Goes for a low kick and was being kind of nice about it. Might might be an option actually to try and go for that low calf kick and sweep that leg out. I wish I would have thought of that. I held the hand that the knife was in thinking, all I need to do is hold you here for a couple of seconds. I don't even need to hit. 20 seconds is a lot. On the other side. What the heck are you doing? Oh, the marker's on the other side. You change hands. <laughs> That's a tough watch. I mean, that's how it goes. Like that's, you hear stories about, oh, so-and-so stabbed 60 times. And you're like, what, 60 times? Like that, that's how it goes down sometimes. That's crazy. I mean, oh no, not in the head. Oh. How was it? I think Ramsey ends up with zero points. Man, it's tough. He wasn't like he he wasn't wrong. That sewing machine, that that knife attack, that that was legit. It's incredibly frustrating when somebody's doing something against your will and you can do nothing about it. That's how I feel about the poison ivy. Not gonna lie to you guys. I wake up and I'm scratching it. I go to bed and I'm like scratching it and then like I can't stop. That's, that's not the point. Okay, now we're moving on to. Oh, this is me. Okay, cool. So this is where I'll give most of the insight. And actually, there's some stuff with Mike and from Jeff and, and Rokas that was really interesting too. So I'll talk about everybody. So the marker with the knife was my biggest complaint. You don't complain about anything as long as it happens to everybody. So as far as the competition goes, I'm not complaining. But as far as like a test goes, so let's say this was a knife and the marker simulates, okay, if you get touched by the red, that means that you get stabbed. This is a knife actually. But when you have a marker in their hands, they're essentially holding it like this. So you can't really have any like, ow. Kind of sharp. Yeah, this is a knife actually. So you don't really have anything you can grasp onto. Like with this, maybe I have their hand. Maybe it's a single sided blade where like the backside doesn't have anything. It's dull. You can kind of man manipulate it and move it around a bit. But a marker like this is, there's no disarming. You're just trying to catch the hand, which is, I mean, you don't always want to like grab a knife. Steve Wonderboy Thompson. Hey. <laughs> we are doing our typical react stuff. I'm gonna have you help me break down the final three fights that happen. Okay. Okay. But what do I do here first? Oh, I go for the sidekick. That's right. And another sidekick. So my goal right here is to crank up on this elbow so hard that he can't bend it 
to stab me. So I'm thinking, oh, if I can have your forearm underneath my armpit and I can crank up this elbow, then maybe I can just kind of keep you here. But then I push him against the wall, which kind of like, in order to get have this lock and have it work well, I think I would have to be pulling him around, which keeps his arm extended. But by pushing him like this, it gives an opportunity for his body not to move and his arm to move, which kind of gives him that back to do that. And then I'm like, okay, let's get two hands on it. Let's pin against the wall. I remember thinking, okay, I'm just gonna pin him against this wall for as long as I can. And I also remember thinking, wonder if I can step through and throw him like Aikido style. I'm like, I could care less. Yeah, that's when I went for the throw. And then ultimately I was like, this is not a good idea. What, did, what am I doing? Seth did a great job. Unfortunately, his multiple stab wounds were assessed as fatal. I'm gonna tell you guys something right now. We wore these shirts so you could see the stab wounds, okay? Once the shirts were taken off and they were all taken next to each other, you look at mine, you look at everybody else's, I had like a quarter of the amount of stab wounds everybody else had. Other people had it on the face and on their neck, on their cheek. I was clean, I was clean. I had like two or three like really obvious ones, but you know? Well, let's keep a better eye on Mo Rokas's marking for a minute, okay? What people don't understand is that in our heads, just because we're martial artists, we should be doing some kind of matrix stuff to get the, a knife out of a hand. If it's me versus, especially in this small area, me, even if I'm the best knife fighter in the world, I don't have a knife and you have a knife, yeah. I'm getting cut. I'm getting, there, you, there's going to be wounds. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good you are, mm -hmm. unless there's a freak accident that you do to knock it out of his hand, but yeah. you're getting cut. Cut. Yeah, like best case scenario would be like a crucifix or something. Yeah, or best case scenario, if I'm holding somebody's weapon, I don't want to hold it here. I want to hold it like you were All doing early. Yeah, boom enough. here, yep. and I get a takedown and I have the weapon. People don't understand, that's hard. Yeah. What you can't see there is I was like, let's go for a Superman punch off the wall here. So I plant my foot on that wall right there and I was gonna try and fly through him, but he backed up. So I was like, okay, I like space, we'll keep the space. So then I went for a cross, which just barely glanced off. In football, they tell you if you prepare for the hit when you're trying to catch the ball. So if I'm like running, you threw the ball and I go to catch it. If I'm preparing for somebody over there to hit me, there's no chance I'm catching this ball. So that's kind of what happened there. I was like, huh, knife, knife, knife. And I was looking at the knife and I, I just whiffed on the punch, which I very rarely whiff on punches, but that happened. Have so you, you ever heard of defang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing I would have tried to do was just, ah, just try to hit that form as hard as I can. Cause a hmm. lot of times- That's interesting. Yeah, nobody tried that. My goal is to go bang, I mean, on top of just boom. Oh yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm kind of moving go myself Go for a strike back. first and then maybe go for yeah. it. Yeah. Huh, maybe, that's maybe kind of, and what, sometimes you hit that nerve and it's hard to hold on to, yeah, the, to the weapon. Yeah, right. Whiff. He stabs me a couple times. I'm like, okay, we need to readdress this knife hand here. I'm trying to pin that arm to the body and just run it until that person hit a wall. And I pinned it there. I feel like I've got a really good spot here. I could care less about those knees. Pin him there. I've got his hand underneath him. He did not switch hands. What is this stuff happening here? Rokas, let's see where these stabs happen. Pin that arm to the body and just run it until that person hit a wall. Where'd all those stabs come from? One, yes. Uh, two, that's not a stab. That's not a stab. That missed. Forearm maybe. Arm again. Arm again. Where are all these things coming from? I call conspiracy. From here, this is a great position to be in. This hand is underneath him. Bingo, this is the way to go. He did not switch hands yet, he was punching me. Look, that's this hand here. There's no knife in that hand. What are these you got going on? Quit trying to make me look a fool. No, he didn't have the knife in that hand. Wait, did he? Where's the knife at? You can't even see it. Which hand is it in? I can see why maybe he had a hard time with this. Did you see a knife or a marker? I will admit that one didn't go super well, especially that area of me trying to get him into the wall. Punch me so dang hard. Seth, you gotta let this go. So this thing right here, everybody in the comment section, oh, you should have used the thing to keep him away from you. He's got a knife. This is a children's tumbling tool to like help little girls learn how to do flips. Little boys too, if they want to flip. I said that because my sister did tumbling, so I recognize this, but that thing wasn't going to help nothing. Maybe if I could have picked it up and held it sideways, but somebody would have just smashed that thing down out of my hands. It doesn't have good grips. It's not useful. Knife in the right hand, long guard, boom, block. Stops the stab from happening. Wish I could have gotten a grip on it. Ooh, that's a definite stab there. From there, I'm like, okay, let's squish the hand inside. He pulls it out, ah! Stab to the tricep, 
Okay. Okay, then we run back into the wall. We've got that hand pinned. Oh, I don't know if I would have called that two stabs. Then he switched hands. Oh yeah, that's a lot. That was a lot. Okay. He definitely switches hands here. Body lock is not the move. You gotta address the hands. We talked about it with Ramsey earlier. One, two, these are all in the lungs. Three, that's in the lungs. That's in the spinal. Spinal. Then I hit a hip toss here. I hit a hip toss on him and I land a crucifix on him. Yeah, dude. Once he was on the ground, I was like, smash, smash him, smash him good. I just landed on him. My arms and legs. Oh, well, let me just sit back. Can't switch hands if I got both your hands, pal. What is this magic? I should have started elbowing him here, but I didn't. Although Sensei Seth landed a great hip toss and a crucifix, he got stabbed multiple times in vital areas, leaving him with one more zero. Yeah, I'll take it. I, I, mean, I feel like everybody would have gotten a zero. But the big dude like this, who is determined to come at you and going to kill you. Catching the hand was much harder than I expected. Especially with gloves, even oh. while catching the hand. Yeah. I felt like I'd get a hold of the hand and they were still like, and I'm yeah. like, oh. Oh, dude, oh. I'm just thinking in my head. I'm just gonna throw the hardest straight punch. Maybe try to knock this dude out. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I think it's I mean, an option. Yeah. yeah. Okay, round four. And a beautiful sidekick. Launched old buddy across the room. Oh, sidekick. Beautiful. Run up and, and, and try and headbutt him. A lot of people had issue with this. I sidekicked him, launched him. And then from here, he didn't really end up that far away. We were like, from me to, I don't know, that side of the room. So my options were, okay, maybe I'll be able to land the sidekick again, but look at what time has passed by the time he hits the wall. It's been maybe three seconds. Boom, there's 17 seconds left and now he's on the wall. He's got distance from me. We have to restart again. So rather than restarting, I would rather have an advantage. So I run up and I headbutt him, boom. And then from there, I try and grab that hand. Grabbing the hand does not go so well. Would you have waited? No. Okay. No. I feel better about that then. I would um, not. If I'm gonna sidekick you and you go to, like you're falling down, my goal is to get to you I, as fast as possible. I think instinctually, possible. if you see somebody like this, yeah, like there's a, especially in a high stakes situation. Yeah. And since he has the weapon, he's got the advantage. Yeah, very true. So if you stagger him, my guess is to try to take advantage of that and hopefully in a bit of better position. I probably should have just guy. came closer and threw strikes while he yeah. was against the wall like yeah, this, yeah. Bah, rather bah, than bah, headbutt bah. him. But I feel, I feel like the headbutt could have worked. Yeah. Yeah, stab, 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 stab. That's not good. He's so strong. He's so strong. He's doing whatever he wants here. I think because he was moving his hand so fast, I was having a really hard time tracking it. It's a lot easier to catch the upper part of the arm than it is the hand because, I mean, just like, if, look at how much my hand is moving right now and how little this is moving. So I try to catch this first and then I would slide down it, but it just took me way too long to get there. Yeah, that's a lot of stabs, but a nice takedown though. One of the benefits of having this part of the arm, it's a lot easier to manipulate the body with this part rather than this part. This kind of flings around wherever you want it to. If you move this, typically you move a decent portion of the body. Man, I'm hitting you guys with facts this episode, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't know what hand the knife is in at this point. I'm assuming it's that right hand. I lost that one for sure. Good job at all four rounds. Sensei Seth experienced fatal wounds each time and did not earn any points for this challenge. Boo! Yeah, I mean, you could argue that I won every single one of those rounds, but I also lost them all because the guy had a marker knife or a knife in general. It's really disheartening to walk out of that room thinking, yo, I kind of killed that. I sidekicked a dude across the room. I crucifixed somebody. I had another takedown and the other one, I just pinned the dude up against the wall the whole time. Like, I'm good to go. Don't worry about this guy but watching it back like yeah a fair amount of those they hit me clean you know what are you gonna do and it's not even like i got dominated and lost you can still have a really good showing against one of these and you can lose it can go very poorly for you and that's an understatement also this is my second channel if you didn't know that yet this is sensei seth reacts please subscribe to it if you haven't yet if you haven't subscribed to my main channel sensei seth i do really cool stuff like i fight wing chun guys i, I fight medieval knights i try sistema i train like the karate kid i do a bunch of fun stuff go subscribe Hey man, I'm hearing positive things. Oh, yeah. Your t-shirt though, compared to Ramsey's, looks great. 
Look at my shirt. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are pretty bad. There's a couple on the back. That one I think is okay. Six out of four fights, that's not bad. Most of them were on my arms, my hands. Not great to get stabbed, but you know. Comparatively to everybody else, I think I mitigated it the most over the course of the whole four fights. But let's watch everybody else. I thought since they, since they said did better. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, he's my competitor here. Okay, let's see how much he keeps control of that hand. Yeah, so look, even from this position, like typically strikes from the bottom don't matter. If they have a knife, they matter. Great double, but still now their hands are on your back and they're occupied. Look, oh, he's using the shirt there. Yeah, so there's a big difference that has to be made between the pieces of control and MMA versus knife fighting for sure. And I'm sure Jeff would tell you that right now. Like you gotta go for that hand. You can't even just go for the shoulder or the arm. Like you gotta have the hand most of the time. Took them down and they were able to pass it and step, 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 pass it, step, 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 and couldn't do anything. Which also maybe they wouldn't be passing it as much. You wouldn't be so willy nilly about passing something that has a blade on the end of it, but it's possible. And then also besides the passing, just keeping that one hand. Oh my gosh, what a front kick. Into a face, into a takedown. Again, if I'm gonna lose, at least something entertaining. You could argue that that front kick would have deterred somebody from wanting to stab you anymore. Or, you know what, now that it's coming out of my mouth, typically the style of doubles that Jeff does, I think are a little less like up to down, as much as they are like chain and getting your feet caught up and like driving you. But if Jeff wanted to, he could easily, once he gets that double, pick up and then slam. If I were to like coach Jeff on how to fight, that would be what I would say. I'd be like, dude, hit that double, lift him up, drop him on his head. You maybe don't want to do it against these guys, but <laughs> robot show. I think they'd let me fight one of those for a YouTube video. Probably not. Starting with Icy Mike and his extensive training in knife defense. Last year, I did about 70 hours of coursework in knife defense. In <sighs> guys, look, if I start scratching, you have to tell me to stop, okay? Sometimes I just am in a different place and I start scratching and it's bad for me. So please just tell me to stop. Ooh. Ooh, gee Louise. Is this Aaron? Aaron with the tie clinch? Golly, gotta keep that head up. Boom. Mike does eventually get the grip that he wants. And once he's here, I mean, that is a great spot to be in. Aaron's arm is across his body. Mike has got it pinned. These strikes that are coming from here, these are not gonna do much. Oh, why did you? There you go, okay. Oh, whew. Yeah, that's an interesting position to be in because when you have 20 seconds and you're here, if you know that in 20 seconds, something is gonna stop it all from happening, you wanna keep it here, you wanna hold it there. But in all actuality, you don't know if somebody else is gonna come for help. So what do you start doing from here? Because any move that you make, you're more likely to get stabbed. But if you hang out there for too long, nothing might happen. You might end up gassed and then they have a knife. So I don't know, that's an interesting one. Mike is really seemingly trying to prioritize a specific grip. He goes body lock here, which is funny enough, the same thing I did with this guy. Ooh, oh. let's watch that again. So same thing, goes body lock, prioritizes that, and gets a nice takedown where the dude just smashes his face against the wall. Mm -hmm. Ow, ow, jeez. <laughs> oh gosh, that looked like it did not feel good. But he got stabbed a lot of times before that. I know he stabbed me to death, but I think I took him with me. Nice shots from the top. I have no idea. Oh! I think that fight would have ended for sure. I think Mike would have done him in, but it might have been too late. Matt's up. I'm in a bit of a recessive mindset. I need to switch that to become the predator. And I just started swearing at Aaron. And that helped me transition into being a bit more aggressive and just focusing on finishing the job. So you could hear Matt in the other room. All of a sudden you just hear and you just hear Matt flying around. Beep, you beep, beep, and you beep, and you beep. There was nothing hypothetical about what he was doing this time. And it, it was working. I actually peeked around the corner after hearing all the swearing and I was like, I wanna see, I wanna see. And, and it was, he was a force to be reckoned with. The mindset is a big deal that I don't think any of us really tried to do. None of us really tried to flip that switch quite like Matt did. And going forwards, I'm working on getting there. That was a really cool takeaway. Thank <laughs> you.
Even though Matt was close to surviving, his wounds proved to be fatal, and he did- That should have been a point. I- Not get any points for the first round. Mm, I think you should have had that one, to be honest. Ooh. Yeah, the body lock, it feels safe, but now that I think about it, it's like the worst spot you can be in because feeling safe when you're not safe is a huge problem, especially like what Mike talked about earlier with when people have reported getting stabbed, they feel like it's just a punch. Like if you feel like you could just get punched in that position, who cares? It doesn't bother me. Oh, nice leg kicks. Yeah, ultimately, the body lock, I think I would take out of my repertoire. And I think I will when it comes to knife defense. As safe as it feels, I think I would prioritize getting the arm instead. Despite a great show of heart... Look, you can see where he got stabbed in the face, right there on his eye. Matt did not get any points. And then, it was my turn to have the final attempt. Oh, there's potential like... He's doing a good job of keeping that arm. I'm sure not, but I realize if I'm gonna do it, probably he's gonna switch hands. So uh, it's really interesting. I already mentioned this this video. I said you probably don't want to try and do anything if you've got him in a good position that he's not moving in. And he said it because he might switch hands. Something might change. A variable might happen that you're not ready for. <laughs> Even though I got only three wounds, the judges assessed that they were fatal and I received zero points. I mean, even that one, I'd say he won. Interesting, this kick here. This is what I would call a hip kick. He's staying squatted and he's trying to push the guy's hip away. It's not the worst idea. I, I don't hate it for sure. I think ultimately you'd have to really throw it hard. So it's not gonna be a damaging kick. Kicking somebody in the hip like that might sit their hips back, but it's not gonna like really do damage. The knee, that could really do damage, harder to land. The body launches people. The hips kind of sit them back and down, which doesn't really stop people as much. Loses that hand. Everyone comes out exhausted. So I'm thinking, I'll try to defend myself as best as I can. But if I see I'm dying, I'm going to conserve my energy for the next round. That's cheeky. That's that's cheating, Rokas. It's a good strategy, though. If I would have thought about it, I would have done it for sure. But bad mindset to have, Mr. Rokas. You're not a cat. You don't get to live nine lives, sir. Also, humans have this weird habit of doing the same thing that is being done to them when it comes to fights. So if you see people in fights who throw a leg kick because they are trained to do so, typically the other person will also throw their own crappy leg kick. This is a good example of that. Not that Adrian's is a crappy leg kick, but he had not kicked anybody else this whole time. Rokas kicks him, he kicks back. And we get to the last one. This is the important one. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, those two didn't count? Grabbed him, tackled him, I find myself sitting there on top of him, hitting him in a pretty good position, and I'm like, I'm not gonna move from you. Yeah, this is a great position to be in. I can't really tell what hand the knife is in, but having both arms and squeezing them up and in while you have their body trapped, for seven seconds, that's a really long time. How do you keep him there? He's touching my helmet here. I'm like, this is not as bad as it could be. You just hung out. George, and in a slow motion fashion, he moves towards my neck and slashes it. I'm not giving up. Despite my attacker slashing my throat once I let go after the bell, I soon learned that the judges were discussing whether I survived this round. Show them your face. This was done during, that was done after. I mean, that's the scoring, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that I would have given Rokas a different one over that one. I think I would have given him round one over that one, but that's me, you know, I'm, who am I? Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Please make sure you subscribe, comment other stuff that you want, send me cortisone, please. Until next time, peace.